Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together one more time in this house. Praise God. We may take our seats, but in the presence of God. What a blessing to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It's nice to be here. Let me take the time to greet the settlement of God of this house. Surely a, a leader. Mfundi sustoy no mama. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you once again for affording us an opportunity to contribute to the lives of young people in our time. We appreciate you and the work that you're doing here in the South Coast and your wife and the entire church and your leadership. Amen. And to all the pastors, Pastor uh, Lujaza, as an exception to what we call a leading apostle. Um, Fondis, thank you for being here. We appreciate you, your genuineness and your heart of harmony and bringing brothers together all the time. We appreciate that heart all the time. Abbe Fondis, and their wives, those that are senior to me, and those that are colleagues to me, Fondis, and an old friend. Fondis, thank you so much for being here. We come a long way, praise the Lord. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Kaim Tetra. What a gift and what a grace in front of some. Thank you so much for staying true to what God has called you to do. You know, it, it is amazing to have watched your ministry over the years growing. We appreciate you in front of this And I'm doing a bonga for wonderful worship to everybody that is here. Oma bongo tata bonke. Abanda basha, abanda nambeskola se tawe ndian bulisa. Amen. Hallelujah. But my task, I'm going to try to make it very short and very brief. And uh, thank you for this so warm welcome. I want us to go to the first book of Samuel, first Samuel chapter number 17. I want us to look at verse 45 and verses number 49. First Samuel um, 17, verse number 45 and Verses number 49. Praise the Lord. Class, he told us it. Amen. Class, now he told us it. Not yet. All right. Praise the Lord. Are there any young people in the house? All right. The house must not grow cold. Are there any young people in the house? All right. First Samuel chapter number. 17, we're going to go to verse 45. The Bible says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a dagger, a spear, and a sword. But I come against you in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel's armies, whom you have defined. Verse number 49, David put his hand in the bag took out the stone, slang it, and hit the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank in his forehead and he fell on his face on the ground. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you anoint my lips of clay. The meditation of my heart that I may rightfully divide the word of truth. I make it known I cannot teach, preach without your Holy Spirit. Use me again as a vessel in your hands. Speak to the audience and the preacher and leave no stone unturned. Be God in this place tonight. Show up mightily, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But Tanigayo, yeah, it would be nice to you to keep playing. That's good. Yeah, I'll appreciate that. Amen. And I just want to probably to touch on a few things so that I can get to the text. 
I was looking at the issue of the pandemic, what it has done, especially if we're talking about the issue of raising the standard. What the pandemic has done, but it has taken away the genuineness of our faith in God. There's something we are losing, but we're not seriously looking at it. You remember when we, when we grew up in church, and we'll get somewhere, amen. Remember when we grew up and we, they told us about three things that were critical. You know, about Vangeli City, they gave us three things that were important that made us to be who we are in Christ. They said we must pray. They said we must study the word. And they said we must fellowship. And those three things, if you look at them, they are the mostly attacked. Because you will decide oh good, they are less important than talking about haters. But the moment I talk about haters, I provoke your emotions and you jump and don't want to talk about things that talk about our standard. Things that are foundation to us. Because at the end of it all, it's going to depend what are the pillars you are standing on. Do you know that prayer is attacked? Prayer. You see, kona banda bati sili fu zelo banda elak alabusi so uba kumtuli sima cholongo mumu tuli uti lalibusi ngoba lalsenza because in the Bible they continued in the teachings of the apostle, the breaking of the bread and in prayer. And even our young people, if they can understand those three things, do you know what prayer does? Let, let, let me, as, as, as form of my introduction, let me just bring that because, before I come to the text. Do you know what prayer? Prayer is our lifeline. You can't be effective in whatever you do without prayer. The book of Mark 11, 23, 24 says, whatever you ask in prayer, Believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Whatever you ask in prayer, receive it, believe and receive it and it shall be yours. And if I look at the text, it in prayer, it means prayer is a place that the heavens have put together for a place to be a place of asking. I wish you can hear this. You see, Tina and Jebus call us There is a place which heaven has legally put as a place of asking. It's called prayer. Jesus says, pray and never stop. Before he began his ministry, if we talk about standard, we must talk about these foundations. When he began his ministry, he began by praying. He had to pray. I typically believe and receive and it shall be yours. I always make this example in fullness about prayer, what it does. Prayer is as the same as you go to apply for an ID at Home Affairs. Who likes to go to Home Affairs? Home Affairs is one of the places you hate going to. Because number one, the chew is long. Number two, you know you're going to stand there the whole day. But do you know when you go to Home Affairs to apply for an ID, the first thing you're going to meet is the chew. That goes to the till point. But, 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 but prayer, you must be persistent in prayer. That, that's why the Bible says, they, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh God, I wish somebody can get this. Even if you, you hate chewing, you have to be in the chew. Pray and never stop. Next, you are coming closer to the till points. Every time. Have you ever, have you ever gone to home affairs with Jewish from 8 o'clock until uh, 4 p.m.? Waiting the whole day. But you don't move in the line because you are hoping 
that your turn is coming. So prayer, you must be persistent. I don't care. There is a dimension or there is a, 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 somehow a wave in young people's mind to think that we can substitute prayer with education. There is absolutely not. There is no PhD. There is no amount of money or cars or houses that can... Prayer is a dimension that can never be substituted. Whether you like it or not. When you get to home affairs, the first day you get there, they don't give you the ID, the hard copy. They put you in the system. Malachi says you first receive before you have. And they will tell you, you will come later for collection. They will send an SMS. Oh God. That's why when you have prayed, you must know that you are in the system. Uh, somebody who's looking at you now, at Lemonte Funa, I will now tell them I'm in the system. Don't worry about the car. I've already prayed about it. I am in the system. I'm waiting for an SMS that says, Come for collection. Nobody can come and collect without chewing. Oh God, oh God. You must pray. You must pray. And we are afraid to talk about these issues because we want, but let me tell you, we should talk about these things, especially youth conferences, because these are our standards. These are our fundamentals and values. Prayer. Prayer. Some, when you have prayed, you must know you are in the system when you have prayed. Heavens are waiting to send an SMS. I was rooted in the ID. We are happy. We are. We cannot spend the colleague ID. Unga zango for no solo. All of us colleague. You can't collect without being in the system. You must be persistent. I don't, but I'm, there is nothing we can do to substitute prayer. Prayer is not a method. It's a principle of God. It's a kindom principle. Abanabasha must know this lady. No one has feeder enough education, enough modernization, enough soft education. It does not matter. Prayer, they must find us in our knees. We must pack big cars, speak big English, but they must find us in our knees. We know where the power is. Because there are people highly educated than you, but they don't have jobs. You have a job because you know where the power is. Number two, what we, have, what we are losing now is the study of the word. No, must for men, but because must for men. Yeah, must for men. When I'm going to leave this, before I'm going to leave this, the music volume, before I'm going to leave this, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to agree. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this. Let, let's agree. Um, if a state in no weapon formed against me shall prosper in down, the last time you heard that verse was when the preacher was preaching. And now we go to the confidence, no weapon formed. Where is the verse? Jesus, in the time of his testing after praying, the Bible said he was hungry after 40 days. But the enemy will always come at a time when you are hungry. He doesn't come on the 17th day. He come on the 40th day when he's about to finish. And Jesus, you understand what Jesus does. He fights him through the word. He says, eat. When, when the devil says, change the stones to be bread, he pointed him to something he has the capacity to perform. Whenever he tempts you, he tempts you at the place where you have the capacity to perform it. I'm telling you. There are things who are very far from you. He will never tempt you at that position. There's cutting in a motor. There are no temptations that demand you to drive to Deben. But the moment you have a car, now there's an SMS that's calling you to Deben because there is a blessing and the capacity to perform it. Because I don't want to deal with that. Now, if you look at the book of Ephesians, the whole armor of God, 
the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, and it, the belt of truth, the sandals, the preparation of the preaching of the gospel, all of those are defensive tools. The only tool which is offensive, it is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You can fight any battle and win without the word. So our young people must come back to a place where they come back to the word. That's the second thing. The third thing that is being taken away is fellowship. Now, we're going to debate about this because of the, the pandemic. The president gave, gave numbers, well, 100, 250, or 50, doesn't matter. But fellowship is critical. I want to emphasize to every young person, it is important. I'm, 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 I'm going to deal with that. I was glad when they say to me, let us go in the house of the Lord. The question, David, was, now, was there no God in your house? I want to ask Brother David, was there no God in your house? But he says, I was glad when they said, let us go in your house. So it means that there are things that he does in his house. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to prove that. Listen, he says, There is an anointing that is assigned for a gathering. There is a grace that's assigned to break the barriers and the limitations that you bring from home. There is an anointing for corporate gathering. So gathering cannot be taken lightly. Coming to church is not the same as watching on the cell phone. David says, In fact, by coming in the house of God, there is a blessing of coming. Without singing, without preaching, just entering the house of God. There is a blessing of coming. That is why they don't drink the savannah at home. They drink it in the ship. Oh God. Oh. We know the power of fellowship. We know the power of gathering. That's why we are here also. We are here to drink from the anointing. To drink from his glory. We are here. Power of fellowship. So there are three things. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm doing this like more like a start. I'm, I'm showing it to you. There's three things must go back to the church. Every young person must just take prayer, the word, fellowship. You will see your, your life of open. But I listen to me. There is no kind of degree and no kind of being an intell intellectual that can substitute those three things. Never. Go and ask everybody. Go and ask everybody. I'm not saying we should not study. No. But I'm saying that should be balanced by that. Now, I, I want to come to David and then and I leave you here. I want to say that because the pandemic has introduced a way you is very okay with matters. Okay. We should not be okay. That's how we cannot drop the, 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 there's more that's found in him. We cannot settle for less. And if you are going to prayer, for two minutes, while we are going deeper, go back, all generations, oh, my daughter, God, my daughter. One confront as a preacher, what not man be a You should have been ten times what you are. The problem, even the preachers don't pray. He says, "There's a dimension where you guys take a U-turn." Also, figure Google Facebook notification, Google Facebook. Because the dimension the devil hates. Anybody here will tell you, if you can say to, if, 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 if you can say to yourself, I'm praying at six. Half past five, there's something that's important that will appear. I mean, I told people about about fundisi, because we must cool leg in our way, and I'm standing on six. Get it? Tanzania go go man. Get it? Go go check about. Oba u six ngega fi ku sara ne pila. The devil knows the power of prayer. Get it now. Right then, rakapa shata. In, the, in that phone call. Do it right then. Because the enemy knows the power of prayer. Let's deal with it here. Let's deal with the text. I want to deal with the account of David quickly. this. 
David is a young fellow. You will know that he is a son of Jesse. Rejected and Ishuyak is a bit, you know, noisy. And there's a lot of things around David. Now God begins to reject Saul, the current king. And God begins to point to Samuel, the prophet. He points him towards the house of Jesse. My subject tonight, for those who, have, who like subjects, my subject tonight is that it was not the stone, it was the name. I want to say that. So you will understand as you go down. The Bible says, Samuel arrives in the house of Jesse to anoint a king whom the Lord has agreed in his heart to anoint. When he arrives there, the Bible says, Jesse begins to bring all his sons. And the word all there is somehow questionable. Because the all is not including David. So he brings them all, but the all is not the actual all. So he brings them up, and Samuel, one by one, he goes to them, and he realizes God is not saying anything by each one of them. And he, little, on his way out, he begins to ask a question, is there any other son? Because people will forget you, but when your season comes, God will always remember. You see, people will, will allow a situation that's supposed to bless your life to pass by. But when it's your time, God will move the last shall be the first. When your time comes, there is nobody that can stand the timing of God upon your life. Somebody say amen. So David is brought from the fields to his father's house. For the very first time, for this, um, prophet Alinde. Oh God, I'm a prophet about Alinde. I'm a cool, but I'm a bad teacher, but I'm. Um, for some non-girls, never am lunch. They come and declare things, and they leave you. Samuel is saying something interesting. He says, "We're not eating or drinking until he arrives." Because when 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 your season comes, people who are not normally waiting or normally patient, they will be patient. When your season comes, people who don't wait for anybody will wait for you. When your season comes, you will be late at the interview, but the panel will wait. Because it's your season. When your time comes, it doesn't matter who is against you. When your time comes, God will make you to show up. Now, David arrives. I feel David and friends, the Bible says... He looks at all. He looks at them. And then there's a father and there's a, there's a prophet. And then he can see the horn and the oil. He knows. It's not a, a, a casual visit. It's an official visit. The Bible says, God says, this is the one after my heart. And the oil was poured on him. The oil was poured on him. From top it went on him, the oil. He was anointed at that time as the king. But interesting, at that moment, I don't hear David at the palace. You must hear this quick. You won't catch me there. But you don't understand why I'm, 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 I'm raising my voice there, if you don't understand when I'm here. You see, when David knows the anointing is over his life he does not pack the bags and say it's time to go to the palace David take the sling and the rod and goes back to the fields as if nothing happened oh God so David has an opportunity to go to a place of advantage because by right he is anointed but David does not go to a place of the advantage to take the crown from an existing king. But David chooses to go to the field. So everything looks ordinary, yet he is anointed. But there are times in your life when God anoints you and God declares a weight over your life. But you wake up the very morning and things look the same. 
But I want to declare to you today that the things are the same, but you are not the same. Okay, I want to say that again. Things around you are the same, but you are not the same. Because there's a prophetic word that's over your life. There is an anointing that's over your life. David, don't worry. Everything around you is the same. But there is a word around your life. The, the Bible says, he goes back to the fields. Go back to the fields. And amazing. Amen. Amazing enough. When he gets there. Strings now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, so what I think is, you're going to be fine. Okay, all right. Now, when David arrives at the fields, the Bible says, here comes the lion. Here comes the bear. Then David begins to fight both things. The lion and the bear. He kills both of them. He kills both of them with nobody watching. Please, don't lose me here. David, one of his greatest victories in his life was to kill a lion and a bear. And there was no audience clapping hands for David. We are the only ones because we are the readers of the text. But in the time he lived the text, there was nobody watching the victory. But there are things you, you survive and you conquer and nobody sees them. And there are things we are not supposed to be publicized. Sikoni Zindo, that are not supposed to be posted on Facebook. Yet you know there are victories. There are things that you overcome and to become victorious in them, but they are not supposed to go to the public. And be okay with no audience. And be okay with the fact that nobody is watching. I am here to announce to everybody who has ever had a victory in the secret place. That victory was preparing you for what's going to happen when you face Goliath. But there are victories you don't display. There are victories you don't show off. Because those victories are muscle builders for where you are going. And I came by to announce to you that the hour has arrived for that when you exercise your muscles. But I know you are killing the lion inside. You are killing the bear inside. Every time you wake up in the morning, we are fine, I'm fine. I've just conquered the lion. But I had no time to post it. I'm starting my PhD. I had not put it on Twitter. But when the time comes, there is nobody that can stand your season. And there are victories that must never be announced in your life. David kills the lion. He kills the bear. And nobody's watching. He walks up the other day to give his brothers food. I'm building this case to get to my text. When he arrives there, he gives them the food. And he hears Goliath. Oh, but yeah, guys, we are fine. Nobody must touch anything. We are good, right? The guy is fine alone and nobody must touch anything. We're going to get there quickly. Now, you must understand as he brings the bread. After he's, he has Goliath, he's cursing the armies of God. For, for 40 days, he walks in the valley between two camps. And he begins to curse the armies of God. For 40 days, no man is strong enough to face Goliath. A boy of 17 walks in to bring the bread. But a boy in his own season, he arrives at the camp. When he arrives, he hears a voice of Goliath. And he asks one of the questions I don't understand. What shall be done not to a boy, but to a man that will defeat Goliath? 
what shall be done to a man he's talking boldly fearlessly he knows what happened in the wilderness he knows the things is coming from what shall be done to a man and they said you are too young because there are people who will try to tone you down when your season arrives but I came here to announce don't tone down move over to them and go to Saul and say what shall be done to a man that kills Goliath when your season comes you must be bold it's my time I know where I've been through I want to make this example simple thing there are two doors here if Goliath walks in that door and allowing the bear walks in that door where would we go I want you to do a proper calculation, analysis of the scenario. There is a lion and a bear in that door, and there is Goliath. Where are we going? Because I'm trying to analyze why is the boy has so much courage to face Goliath? I want to, and why at 17 he's so bold and fearless. If there's a lion and a bear here and there is Goliath, that's like, where are we going to go? CM2. Do you know why? It's because the man is a lesser battle than the lion and the bear. So then let me announce to you. In Oh, let me declare it again. What you are facing is too small than what you have been through. Can I declare? is too small than the things God has brought you from. You were, you were ostracized and you were rejected. But God kept you. I come a long way to give up now. I fought many battles greater than this. Goliath, you are too small. I'm coming from the lion. I've got scars from the bear's cloth. I want to declare what you are facing is too small. I came to announce in Post Shepstein, whatever Goliath you face is too small than the things you came from. You fought a long way to get here. God showed you by his grace that nothing is impossible. Come a long way. That's why you must get ready to fight again. 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 God again. God kept you by his hand. Oh, Paul, what do you mean? I am what I am by the grace of the Almighty God. Because there is a level that we must understand that it's not by us, by our ability and capacity that we stand. We stand because God has placed us in his season. Now listen to David. He picks up, he picks up five smooth stones. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring in the, the book of Acts 28 and, 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 and try to join it to what David is doing here. He picks up five smooth stones. Listen to the text. The text does not say he picked up five stones. It says he picked up five smooth stones. He picked up five. There was no need for the Bible. No need, really. It's a waste of, of ink as they write. It really, they just take that thing up. They should have said they, he picked up stones. There were five. And it is stones, this description. And there were five, which is the, the number of them. So it's clear. It's five stones. But the Bible wanted to say he, the five were smooth. Read the text. The five were smooth. Oh God. You see, you see, you see the, 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 the stones were five and they were smooth. And David picked them up. 
Now Saul gives him a garment that belongs to the palace. And David rejects the garment. But he had no garment in the wilderness. Now he says, I can't take a palace thing and bring it to the fight. Because the fight before me is too small. If I have conquered, that's why you must never change the method. People can bring new doctrines, but don't change the method that God has brought you out by. The same hand that took you out of Egypt is the same hand that will make you cross over the Red Sea. Don't change the system. Use the same hand. Now, five stones. He takes one. He takes one stone. One stone. He puts it on the sling. And he begins to do this. Last one that come. And Goliath walks into the valley. He goes there and says, You bring a bow. Who am I? Why do you bring this boy here? And David says, You come to me with javelin and a spear and a sword. David begins to describe his armor. But watch how he described his armor. Oh God. He says, but I. He's got the sling. He's got the stone. That's his armor. But watch his words. But I. Come to you. In the name. Oh, oh, David, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't come to him in the sling? No, no, no. You don't come to him with a stone? No. I come to you. In the name of the God of the armies of Israel. While you're looking at the stone, I'm carrying the name. While you think it's the degree, but within the degree, there is a name. You think it's just music. It's not music. I came to declare, we don't only have stones, but we have a name. I came to declare we have a name. I came to declare it's not only the stone, it's the name. It is the name above all other names. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. We have a name. business, but business. There is a name. Sinekam. Whatever you bring, devil. I have a name. I have a name. I'm tired, but I have a name. I'm rejected, but I have a name. I'm abused, but I have. Somebody say yes. Somebody better get me out here. Somebody say yes. I need some prayers. Somebody say yes. I have a name. And the Kinana Robuse, I have a shaka, and the Kinana Fundo, but I have a name. Inside what I do, there is a name. There is a distinction between the stone and the name. Others are talking about the stone, but we talk about the name. No See, by his grace, we stand. Let's agree. It was not the stone. I need every scientist and every biology student to come with me and help a brother who studied the text. Why on earth is the stone hitting a forehead of a giant 
and it go inside the sky. I need scientists to explain to me. One smooth stone is able. I mean, but what's wrong with the stone? It was not the stone. It was the name. Goliath checked the boy. Check the stone, but he missed the name. Yama Shakata. When you come in your season, they will check your age, check your mistakes, check your church, check your downfalls, but they will miss the name. Bengas I want to declare when you come for an interview, they will check your degrees. Young people, it's not the PhD, it's the name. Let the world know we are standing because of the name. Yes, we are educated. Yes, we've got money. Yes, we are gifted. But we have with a name. We have a name. We have a name. We have a name. We have a name. Our victory is in the name. Let's go back and study. Let's go back and do business. Let's go back and buy cars and lands and build churches and build schools. But don't forget the name. Ushaka, we need the name. Church, the name is our standard. Oh, Nama Shaka, let me The name is our standard. It has been given power on heaven and on earth. Under the sea, the name has the power. I want you to sit for this. I want you to see about this quickly. If you think it's the stone, if you think it's a stone, let me worry you and confuse you and then irritate your, 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 your cognitive abilities. If you think it's a stone, how can people who are more educated than you are not successful as you? How can people who are more educated than you but are less successful as you are? So our young people must come into a space where they know there's a distinction, a thin line where we have somehow leaned on our cognitive abilities and everything else we do as our form of, 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 of showing off. Paul says, I've considered everything as refuse because of the overwhelming knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm an attorney. But when it comes to the grace of God, I've understood it's not by might, it's not by power, but by his spirit, said the Lord of the armies of Israel. So between your stone, you must understand there is a name. We must recognize, let the world know, as we sing, they must know within your lyrics, within your vocals, within your pitch and your tone, there is a name that pulls the soul out of hell. There is a name, there is power that no man can comprehend. Within our presentation and preachings, they are not just doing motivation, there is a name on the text. It comes alive. It takes souls out of hell. The name. The name. There's a name. That's why our people, when they come to the podium to testify, there is a temptation these days to talk about the stone more than the name. Nothing wrong, but 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 we need again to balance the equation. But and the funba ute tenge liche ube ngati liche. And that's the man. No, amaje nam di na amaje manins agweli luwa amaje manins di na na u na amaje. But when we come to testify at the end of the testimony, for salvation is not about getting and having, but it's about being and becoming. Oh God, I'm going to repeat it again. Salvation is not about getting and having, but about being 
being and becoming. So at the end of my testimony, I've talked about my degrees. I bought a new car. I bought a new house. I got married. But at the end of the testimony, I said, I am what I am by the grace of the Almighty God to prove to the world it's not because we're clever. It's because the favor of God was upon our lives. I'm going to go to Paul quickly and close. You hear parents saying something to their kids. He's got good genes. And he's coming from a good family with intellects. And you listen to them breaking about the stone. And then, because church, we must understand that there is a child who's coming from a house of diplomats, but he's, he's on drugs. Hmm. So, 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 so prove to me what was working. Was it the stone or was it the name? So, so, so then, 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 then as a parent, you must sit your kids down and say, all that's here is because of the name. We are kept together. We have not lost our minds because even you going to school, private school, is because of the name. Yes, I'm clever, but grace took over. Uh, because there are clever guys who are beneath the clay, they are dead. But I'm alive because of the favor of the Almighty God. Our young people must learn that the name is our standard. Let's walk to universities. Let's walk to businesses and close bottom doors and speak in tongues. It was Nehemiah who said, as you build one hand with a brick, but the other hand with a sword. As you build, keep the prayer. As you build, keep the word. Look to your neighbor and say, it's not the stone. It's the name. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. The world brags of stones. The world brags of stones. And even the children of God brag of the same. We can't be held together by the same commodities as the world. Unless uh, must put us equal and Uba need to make a match, must go together. That's not something so sell it. Then the again. My, my, my value comes. If our standard is commodities, common things of the world, my value comes. See, see, I must show his own. I equal it. Because um don't call on a monto if I ne yako. Unenge fan yako. So that can be the breaking point. That can be your standard. That can be the breaking point. When all comes to a push, you must say the name has hold me together. We try so much in, in, in the position of imposing relevancy, we excuse the name. I mean, I'm waiting for a time, Pastor Kai, where we're going to have intellectual preachers but talking about the name. At, 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 at the end of a, a click presentation on the screen, was a presenter a good you know presentation was a clicker with the seven steps to success with our step number three lingenica the pity zelens who shut up moko shut up lingenica man it composed ubonagalba the presentation has caught and has the name about to babanjo a month and begin to be confident in the faith of their god I'm waiting for a time of educated young people. I'm waiting for a time of intellectuals and people of the book and people who have studied, young people with money and cars and businesses and schools and NGOs and NPOs. But when they stand to present their case and say, I am born again, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, with all confidence, no fear or favor, no worry of anybody else. Let's make money and declare the name. Let's buy cars and declare the name. Name. Let's be cute and nice and declare. Let's put makeup but still declare the name. I am what I am by the grace of God. 
our generation must be a generation that when, when you wake up in the morning and put your, your, your best dress, put your makeup and drive your SUV. Back I'm going to wait to you know. I'm just going to kneel before the Almighty God and say thank you for the week and thank you for the weeks ahead. But is that all? Oh, that's all. I know where the power is. It's in the name. It's in the name. It's in the name. I'm for education. I am for excellence. I am for everything. But not at the expense of the name. Lama shana nalaba. There are times even us as preachers We are tempted to be politically relevant And everything else to it And add literature and add academics But after having done everything Don't forget the name Hayabasha I was talking to Bible students the other time They called me to motivate them I said okay They called me to me I said okay I'll go there And as I went there I prepared Nonga I wrote everything um, And it was nice Very nice English I put them together You know I'm sure to prove my seriousness but when I got there I got there and everybody was there about 30 of the students the deans are here to motivate and I motivate them and as I go I realize that I'm going to be missing a generation if I'm giving them what the lectures gave them there must be an infusion and an injection that comes out of this gathering that no lecture or academic can give them when all hell breaks loose out for there is no lecture, there's no Greek or Hebrew. Ah, humanetics and exegesis, expository preaching and presentation on the text. I saw sevens, sevens come. lay your hands on your kids and say you are living in the name of Jesus. You stand with no weapon formed against me, shall be able to prosper. When things are rough, with the greater is he. That is in me than the one is in the world. When things are tough, would you no know, eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has prepared for those who love all things work together for the good for those who love him. And who are the core? What shall we say? In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, no height, no depth, no principalities are able to separate us from when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Those he foreknew, he also justified. Those he justified, he also qualified into the image of his heart. Ah! I can do all things to Christ. Who can, somebody better get me out. I can do all things. So I ruined a nice presentation and the lectures came to the altar and said, you came well, but we realized we could not stop what came on us. The lecturer didn't know what came on them. They said, we could not stop what came on us. I said, it's the power of the name. It's the power of the name. In the quest of being relevant as a young generation, we must not do it at the expense of the name. But, but, but parents also, let's teach our kids. They were foolish. They were foolish. They were foolish. They were uncle. You know, if I walk around, yes, 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 and if you find out, if I get some funds, but the husband para has to blend in with you. I go back on a man's leg, but in a man's leg, I'm an every colliat that is in your life. <laughs> Let me share this and leave it to you. I'm just coming to the point of closing, but I want to share this in the same context. I want to share this for somebody who's discouraged here. That you must understand that the victory of David was him aligning himself to the name. He had to align himself to the name. He says, 
Well, I have credentials. In fact, I was anointed by Samuel as a king. He never talked about anything close to that. All he said, I come to you in the name of the armies of Israel. As he releases the stone, church, a hand of a boy, at what speed can we calculate? I need mathematicians and scientists. I need everybody to calculate. At what speed was that? That a smooth stone went all the way ooh, to the forehead of a giant and went inside the skull and the giant fell on his face. And I want to announce today at the Kingdom World Church that there are giants after this conference that are about to fall on their face. When you walk on Monday on your business, there are giants that will fall. Because as you walk into your workplace, they will think you are bringing the stone. But tell them, after the conference, I'm bringing the name. I already have the stone. I'm qualified by the stone. But I'm bringing the name. Before I close here, let me come to Paul and bring in a motivation for somebody tonight. A young person. You see, it was in the book of Acts when Paul was sailing to Rome. But I want you to understand that God works in his ways. Our standard is the grace and the name. You must understand that. Paul is going to Rome. It's going to take about ten, nine and a half minutes. Is that right? I need the half as well. Nine and a half is right, okay. So, so, so Paul journeys to Rome in the assignment of God, but as a prisoner. The Bible kept saying it was the plan of God for him to preach in Rome. But the way to Rome was not nice. But the Bible kept saying it was the plan of God for him to go to Rome. But he's in chains. But the Bible kept saying it was the plan of God. Now, here comes a storm on the boat, and the Bible says it was the plan of God for Paul to preach in Rome. The fact that the path is hard does not say it's not the plan of God. I want to say to somebody today that the fact that there, there, there are struggles and battles on the way does not say it's no longer the plan of God. Now, here comes a storm in the middle of the waters. It is Babylon. An angel of God appeared to bring a word to Paul. But God in his own nature does not discuss a storm. Let me say that again. Utiko akana discuss a storm. Check it back, Billy Yonke. Utiko Arana Nalo, you are busy, a Karenga, and the Stomba, when Zegal and Dominga Lendo. He gives no reasons. He's so busy to discuss a storm. There is nowhere in the Bible, whether it's Moses or Gideon or Elijah, where God discusses the storm. What God does, He brings a word as a form of a guarantee. Now the angel appears to Paul Watch me closely Eight and a half minutes I'm almost there Now as he appears He does not talk about the water Or the storm But as the angel appears He says you must appear Before Caesar So the angel talks about the destiny While Paul is in the storm The angel says you must succeed you must be victorious. You must get your degree. While you are in the storm, you must release your ministry. While you are in the angel, does not talk about the storm, but he announces your destiny. So Lord, what are you saying about the waters? I am not here to discuss the waters, but I'm here to tell you, you must succeed. And I'm here to announce today, on South Coast region, you must be successful. Hold your peace and see the salvation of the almighty God. You must get your degree. You must get your PhD. You must release your sing. You must get the church. You must be launched into your ministry. Look 
to your neighbor and say, you must succeed. You have no choice. You have no choice. You must succeed. I know you're tired. I know they talked about you, but you must succeed. There is no amount of talk that can talk God down as it relates to your destiny. I'm so glad that even your haters and your enemies were not in the meeting that God had. And I'm so glad God is not your uncle. He's God by himself. When he decides about your life, he brings it to pass. Then you see, I want to inject you with faith and in God. I will get everything that has my name in 2021. I have to succeed. Already the meeting is closed. Tell your neighbor the meeting is closed. It's urgent. There is nothing you can do about it. I've made mistakes. I've made mess. But the meeting has been closed. But 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 You have to succeed. I will 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 you remember, let's cut all oh, Jesus Christ, six and a half minutes. You remember, let's cut it. Let's cut it. Just be metal. We are sure with Amabanjo and let's cut it in the time of Jesus. They used to write what is their crime on top here. Angit. So you're passing and angit. I'll turn the passing. Yeah, I always talk about Jesus all the time. So they, they put what, what's the crime? Ben's a mistake. King of the Jews, which is. But I've been using some two years. Ben, for some time, I'll put. Hey, my rest is so my rest is. Pilato, Pilato, we can lend to. We can lend to Pilato. We were supposed to say the one who says he's the king of the Jews. Pilato, he is a long palo, being a bona bat. It is in pen Pilato. What is written is written. Ni figure who laid my thought. What is written about my life is written. Ni this on the late, but what is written about my family has been written. I don't care who can talk, but what God said about me is written. I don't care who looks down upon my ministry, but as for God, what is written? Oh, Baliweyo, oh, Baliwe, I am a shakata. Hey, no bunganga ni funantiga, oh, Baliwe. You know my past, but I am the conqueror in Christ Jesus. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. In Him I move, I live, and I have my being. I am, I'm the head and never the tail. I'm above and never beneath. I am the child of the living God. Blessed all the way, blessed in the fields. You can hate me all you like, but look at me now. He prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Ninga fincha basama zipile Sisa wuru chofa Look what the Lord Inge basake Zimi Gona parate Ule lani Kuye ofa Gobi inge basake Look what the Lord Has done Somebody say yes No one put 
Mkuu Queen, O Paliweo, O Paliwe, No one Pumen to Pegueni, O Paliweo, O Paliwe, No Bibantalia Kadega, O Paliweo, O Paliwe. I will succeed, I will be blessed, my children will overcome. It is written, it is written, hate all you like, but it is written, jump all you like, but it is written. Four and a half minutes, can you sit for a while, I'm just, I'm just pausing this, for this, you can stand because I'm almost done. If you sit, I'll take longer, just stand there so at least I can finish quicker. For this, with all respect to the Son of God. No more Paul begins to go to the guys in the morning and he says to them, guys, the angel came last night. It will, I must appear before Caesar. Number two, the seventh thing, angel says, sure, it, nobody must jump outside the boat. Now, as a student of the Bible, I'm questioning the text. If this boat is falling apart, why is he saying we must not jump? If this thing is falling apart and he is insisting I must not jump, it's a question. Because there are times when your space and everything you have seems to be falling apart. But God says, I pray that you don't jump. Don't lose your faith. He says, nobody must jump. Young people, there are times when you feel like jumping. Next week, 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 next Monday. Have you felt like that? It, it, it looked like Abantu to Belize are having it fun, but mean I'm having it hard. But the instruction at the boat says, Don't jump. Ayabasha, don't jump. The instruction says, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the storm, don't jump. Because the, 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 the declaration was saying, you shall land safely. That was the declaration. That in the midst of the problems, but you will survive. The boat won't survive. But you will survive. You, the boat does not matter as long as you are around and God is around. Job said, naked I came, naked I shall return. But blessed be the name of my God. Everything can still come back. Then in two and a half minutes, this is what the Bible says on, on chapter 28. It says, they land safely at Malta. Land safe at Malta. I always make this example on this text. And I, want, I want to repeat it here. That all the time, you know, every time you fly in or somewhere, in and out of somewhere, you know, there's these things, these potholes there, up there, you know, the, the turbulences. There's potholes everywhere, they're here and there. But those are more scarier than these ones. Because you are too high. You know, it put us in the same You know, so I, I took a fat room tart and was shaking. The small ones, the elderly ones, shaking. For five minutes, kids were screaming. Now I was praying, sabotaging God, Lord, I've got to preach to the nations. You know, trying to blackmail God in the whole thing was going to happen. Lord, I've got to preach to the nations and praying and praying. And, and, and out of nowhere, there was a, a, a son that said, D, and the, and, and the pilot with a calm voice, I don't know who trains the pilots, with a calm voice, he says, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are going through turbulence. But in the next two and a half minutes, I've realized that we are clear to land, and we shall land safely. And when the pilot stopped saying that sentence, I saw everybody calm in the plane. But the turbulence was still there. And I realized it was not about the turbulence. It's that we need the word from the pilot that assures us we shall land safely. 
when times are rough all you need even when the situation is the same but all you need is the pilot's word his name is Jesus and I'm here to announce in South Coast in Kingdom World Church you will learn safely your children will learn safely your family will learn safely your marriage will learn safely your business will learn safely you will survive I don't know what you lost and a pandemic I don't know what you lost I lost some business I lost some cars I lost some money but I have myself and the word from God I will fight again all I needed was him the Bible says the Bible says I'm done here the Bible says the Bible says Paul began to build in fact they got there there was fire built already and then they showed them kindness and, and the fire was going down and everybody was sleeping having a nice time and Paul looking at the fire he went to pick the sticks to build more fire and to pick the sticks and come back and, and, and took the wood into the fire and the snake this was the problem the snake came out and bite him on the hand the comments were not there when you went to pick the sticks the comments um, my greatest problem on the text is that the, the timing of the comments is when he's in trouble not when he's trying to help I'm, I'm, trying, I'm a student of the text I'm trying to figure out why are they commenting were they asleep when this happened why are they only awake when the snake bites him because they never commented when he went to pick the sticks they commented when he was bitten by a snake oh good God because everybody who's trying to do something new is always bitten by snakes I want to say that again the reason you face snakes in your life is because you're trying to do something that your village never did that your bloodline never achieved every time you try a bigger vision something out of this world dynamic and strong to impact effectively a generation there will always be snakes for those who are trendsetters and pathfinders and Paul built a fire I was trying to build the fire trying to build for everybody else it never beat those who are sleeping but it went for the one who was trying to help but the Bible says after he watched him but he's a murderer and they watched him to hope that he falls and die but the Bible says they kept watching the venom of the snake had minutes five minutes was enough to take him down so they watched him five minutes went by or ten minutes went by Paul is standing 15 minutes went by Paul is standing 30 minutes went by they analyzed the situation but the Bible says they changed their minds I am here to declare at Kingdom World Church stand until they change their minds I don't know what kind of snake has bitten your life but stand until they change their minds I don't know what kind of mistake you did but stand until they change their I don't know what embarrassment you coming from but stand and I will stand after having done all I will stand stand therefore stand until they clap hands for you stand until they know you from school stand until they call you friend stand and then still they call you blessed stand until they say I want to be like him stand I don't know who I'm talking to I'm here to inject you with faith to stand we have a name that makes us to stand the Bible says a few days later Pablo's father is sick with fever in the estate and Paul the apostle walks into the house the Bible says he saw him and he prayed for him but here is my concern as I close 
my presentation today. Here is my consent. In the Bible, he prayed. No. When he prayed, but the Bible says he laid hands on. There was no need for the Bible to say he laid hands. But the Bible was pointing us back to the same hand that was beaten by the snake. He laid hands on Pablo's father. Can I declare the same hand of the embarrassment is the same hand of the healing. I don't know who's been beaten by snakes, but today I want to declare the same mistake, the same embarrassment. It's the same hand that will heal somebody. We need your hand. I know you are tired. I know they rejected you, but we need your hand. We need your hand. Lay your hands on a generation and turn them around. Your mistake is a healing to a generation. The same hand. Don't hide your hand. We need your hand. We need your hand. The same hand. Because we have discovered it is never about our strength. But surely by the grace. Never about the stone. Surely by the name. I am what I am. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but maybe I'm talking to myself, but whatever you've gone through, you must understand that the power is in the name. And you must understand you will survive by the grace of God. When you have trusted the stone, you will even blame your hand because of the snake bite. But when you understand the grace, you will stand firm. I'm standing here. Listen to me, church. That's why Romans 8, 20, it says all these things work together for the good. Joseph woke up the other morning, saw his brothers who left him, and he says, what you meant for evil, God meant it. The, the situation was not good, but he meant it for good. And whatever you come across, you must know I'm standing here because of a, another generation that will go back and say we are standing not because of the stone or our strength. Stand in your feet and lift those hands before him. Lift those hands before him. Oh God. Whatever it takes. The name has the power. It's the name. It's the grace, Paul. You will get to Rome because of the grace. Oh God. Oh God. I want us to do something today for two minutes just to thank him for the name. It's, it, 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 it's, it's our standard. It's our standard. Let's go back to school. Let's start businesses. Let's do well. Let's excel. But thank you for the name. Because the name makes make sure that we get breakthroughs in whatever we do in life. Lift those hands. Oh God. There's a song that says, for all you've done, we give you praise. For all you've done. And I'm thinking that you come from a lion in the bear and you face Goliath. But for all you've done, Lord. Oh, Jehoshaphat, don't you dare pull a sword. Lift your hands, Jehoshaphat, and the whole armies of God, and put all the worshippers and let, let them lift their hands. Come on, church, lift those voices just for two minutes and just thank Him. Thank Him. Oh, God. Hey, in your own voice. In your own language, thank him for all he has done. Yay! Well, thank him right here. Ye la ba ba shana la ba kosana, ye na la ba hosa, yay! Lord, I can have everything, but I need the name. I need the power of the name. Come on church One more minute Lift your voice Before your God Heavens are open 
it's our standard the name the grace it is our standard we're standing because of it we fight again we are victorious again because of the name it is the name it is the name it is the name, it is the name. Oh, oh, Yilabashanai, Yana Labacosa, Yelabahosana, Yalabacosana, Yamacosata, Rabababacosa, Yana Lababase, Yekebesara, Yana Lababacosa, in the name of Jesus, Beth in us, O God, Beth in us, O God. A standard of the name of Jesus, a dimension of relying on the grace of God, birth in us, birth in a generation, birth in our time. We need your name. Oh, oh God. This is, this is, I want you to understand this, that We're declaring this to say, Lord, after having everything, but we still need you. Because without you, there is no everything. There are times when we have to be realistic and realize that we thank God for the gospel. We thank God for Jesus. Because he became the standard, the distinction that made us different. I preach a message for many times that Jesus is the difference. He is a difference. 
between us and the world, when things are tough, Jesus becomes the difference. Oh God. And there are times when we have to go back into that place where we say, it was not the stone. It was the name. It was not only by my might or strength, but the grace. Ooh. And there are times when we have to thank him for the name. Ooh. Prince of come, come, come. Ooh, shalala basa. Ooh. The, you know, sometimes there, there are those kind of songs that, 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 that bring, you know, I, I used to hear this song, oh, oh, go, 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 to pray. They will sing a song. It's a song that's not Sia Bonga No Kubong Leafigi Eva. there's something different about this there's something that's a distinction about our lives it's in the gospel 